Hi ho my friends. This is Lori at the Ladybug Journals. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And today we are going to be working in our bird journal again. I am so excited to be working in this journal. And here are the prompts if you would like to play along in your journal. And today we are going to be working with gilding wax and shaker cards. Now the gilding wax I have never ever played with. So we're not going to be playing with it a lot. Um, I'm just going to experiment with it. Um, I've been watching video after video after video after video. You know how that goes when you're learning something new until I think my eyeballs are going to pop out. So um, I'm, we're just going to experiment with it on our shaker card. And um, to kind of, you know, get a little more comfortable with it. And, um, and then we're going to we're going to try something a little later. But um, that's going to kind of be what we're going to use. And I'm going to use this one. It's by Sizzix. And um, if you want to, if you want to get some, and I'm going to use the gold. Um, and um, it smells pretty good, actually. It's got kind of a, um, a little bit of an orange scent. So it doesn't smell bad. And it's called Luster Wax. If you want to get some. Oops, there it is. And, um, you know, they've got all these warnings on there. Um, but I got it on Amazon. And it's got the Sizzix brand on it. And it's called Luster Wax. And that's what the top looks like. Now, I also got the, um, the Luster Wax in the, what's it called? In the Ivory. And this is what it looks like. Now, I figure if I'm going to play with it, I might as well play with it. Oh, dear. Let's get it. Well, I guess I'm going to have to stump it back down in there, but that's what it looks like. So, we'll, we'll get it on a piece of paper and see what it looks like. But that's the... Yeah, and it doesn't smell bad either. It's got kind of a light orange scent to it. So, um, so we'll play with those a little bit today on our cards. So, uh, let's get started. And these are just going to be cards that we're going to use in our journal. And, um, we're going to put the journal aside there so it doesn't get dirty. Now, I have already taken and measured out on the back of our, remember our background that we made? Um, well, I took the little cards that we that we worked on. Ouch. Sorry. <laughs> I punched my fingers. Um, and I mounted them on some dark brown cardstock. And um, and I let them dry overnight under a heavy book, both of them. And then um, I cut the I measured and I cut them down to the size um, that I wanted and I measured it out. Where's my little ruler here? I measured out, you know, what size I wanted. And this little ruler I have had forever. And as you can tell, I've marked on it and it's been nicked. Um, you know, up here it's been nicked and it's really hard to read in places. But I've kept it because it's got the centimeter, centimeter readings on it. So I can get really, really um, down to small measurements on it where this one I used uh, when I was quilting and um, and it doesn't have it and the reason I liked it was it didn't matter how I picked it up you know when I was quilting I could just lay it down and measure and I didn't have to flip and flop it around and on the back of it I have these little sand sandy discs and um and it didn't slip and slide on my fabric. So those are nice. If you can find them, I think they're made by Omnigrid. Um I could be wrong. I don't know who makes these little sandy grids, uh dots, I mean, these little dots. They're little sticky dots. 
Um, they're also very handy on paper, and I have not been able to find them for a while. So if you if you find them, if you'll let me know, um, because I would love to have them on my metal ruler, on the back of my ruler, because this cork is useless. It is positively useless. When I'm measuring, um, you know, to cut a book binding or something, it slips and slides and slips and slides. I don't know how many times I've almost cut my fingers. Um, I would love to have some more of these little sand discs uh, to put on the back of these. These are fabulous. So if you can find them, highly recommend them. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, okay, so here's what I did ahead of time. These were these were glued on here overnight. And now that I'm looking at it, I don't look like I cut that one straight, but you know, par for the course. And um, I dried them overnight and I used my Fabri-Tac um, so that I wouldn't, um, they wouldn't warp. I didn't use a glue stick. And this gold that you see around here was just the gold paint that we splattered with. I just had it on my finger, you know, so I just ran it around here, which is the same as what you use gilding paste for, or gilding wax even. That's the same way that you use it. Um, you know, and then after I did it, I thought, well, that's kind of silly because I'm going to cover it up. But when I cut this out, I'm going to use it around the frame. So you measure, I'm going to show you here. So you measure the size of your picture on the back of your card. So this was the, this was the background that we made. Okay. And it's the same size as this as my, as my, um, is my brown. Okay. So you measure your picture onto your background and that's right here. And then you decide how big of a frame do you want around your picture? Well, here I want to be able for a shaker card. I want to be able to come over this picture just a little bit, but not a lot because I want to be able to keep my flowers. I want to be able to keep some of the tree and I definitely don't want to cover up the bird. So I, I just took my ruler. Here it is. I just took my ruler and I said, okay, so if I start here, this is one centimeter. My frame around here is one centimeter. So if I start scooting and I just scooted my ruler in, how happy am I? You know, how happy am I? How happy am I? No, that's too far. Nope, that's even too far. I don't like that because I started covering up too much of my picture. And I just scooted it around the picture doing that. Okay, here's one centimeter. How happy am I? How happy am I? How happy? How happy? Nah, that's too much. That's too much. And I just did it around the picture, you know, to decide how happy was I. Well, I came up with a measurement of 11 centimeters all the way around the picture that I was happy with. And this is 11 centimeters all the way around the picture right here. This is 11 centimeters all the way around the picture that I was happy with. Okay. That's what I was happy with. So it's one plus two little lines that I was happy with all the way around the picture. So I measured that all the way around here. So there's my one. Now remember, it's not the edge of the ruler. It's that line. So even on regular rulers, even on these rulers, yeah, see, that's the bad part. Even on our rulers, when you measure, it doesn't go to the end of the ruler. 
you have to go to that first line. So remember that. Yeah, these rulers, they're stinkers. They don't start at the end of the ruler. They start here. Okay? And even when you flip it, even when I flip this, there are the words. Start here. Can you see that? And there's a and there's the line to remind me to start at the line, not the end of the ruler. Here, can you see it now? Let's see. Can you see it better? See the words start here and the line? They're the words even that tell me to start here and it's pointing to the line. Because if I start at the end of the ruler, that ruler is actually taking away, oops, let me get to it, two eighths of an inch. So your measurement's going to be off. Now, two eighths isn't that big of a deal, but if you're measuring fabric or something like that, that's a big deal. But it's the same thing on our metal, my metal ruler, on my little on the grid ruler, you know, every ruler I have, even my husband's uh, measuring tape is like that. The only one that isn't is this one. This is the only one I have that goes to the end of the ruler. And it's not in uh, centimeters. So just be aware of where your ruler starts, okay? So I measured around the edge of my, of my, the back of it. I measured the back of it. And then on here, you can see where I cut it out. And we're going to cut this one out together. And then I went on and glued on, and I don't know if you can see it here. I went on and glued on, so this one would be dry, my, um, yeah, see, I just went brain dead on <laughs> the little one, so we could put it on there, and that's what it's going to look like, and then we're going to put the little sequins in there. Okay, so we're going to cut this out. Now, I have, I had, I don't know what I just did with it, here it is. I put it over there to be safe. And I also have my sharp scissors in case I miss a corner. So to cut this out, you start at the corners and you follow your lines. Now you can use sharp scissors if you have sharp scissors and you don't like using a sharp knife. That's okay. Um, I used to be one of those people that didn't like using a knife. Um, when I first started crafting, I hated using a knife. Absolutely hated it. I even have one of those things, you know, that sits on your finger and is supposed to, you know, swivel and go around. And, um, you know, my husband used to say to me, you need to get used to using a knife because it'll help you with your fussy cutting. And it was like, yeah, but I'm going to cut my fingers off. No, you won't. Just go slow and easy. So, um, you know, so, and I was a Girl Scout leader for many, many, many years. And, um, okay, so let's see. And I taught knife safety to girls. But I still didn't like using one. At my craft table. There we go. Now, I'm going to just take my scissors and nip this out. There we go. Now, we will keep this because it's got all those good sparkles on it. Okay. And we're going to put this frame on here. And hope that I got it out right. Because it looks like I did not. It looks like I cut this crooked. So we're going to cut that smaller. Yeah, it looks like I cut the brown paper crooked. So we're going to have to cut that straight. 
because it looks like I cut that crooked. So let's get this and cut this straight because I can see where it's crooked down here. So we're going to straighten this up. And make this a little bit smaller. And I think, I don't think I did any better on that pass. Or maybe it's the top that's crooked. I don't know what side I cut crooked. Or maybe I glued it on crooked. I'm not sure what's crooked, but something's definitely crooked. But we're going to make it a little bit smaller, and we're definitely going to straighten it up. Well, it looks better. So something was crooked, and something needed to be straightened up. So, let's see. Now, let's see if that helped. I don't think it did. I think my my cutout is still a little bit too big. Yeah, I don't think my cutout was straight. So, we're just going to have to... We're going to have to make sure that what we put on the inside is big enough. So, we're not going to worry about what we cut out. We're just going to make sure the inside is straight. Now, I wanted to use this. And this is vellum paper. It's not, it's not vellum. It's vellum paper. Can you see, can you hear the difference? So, and this takes a little bit to dry. And I did cut it bigger. So I'm going to go on and glue it on so it has a minute to dry because it does take a little bit to dry. So where, where did I put my, oh gracious, I had my dry or my gluing, here it is, right here, that I wanted to put it on. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Oh, it's in my hand. <laughs> Never mind. So, the important thing with this is the edges. And with this vellum paper, it's, it is a stinker. And I wanted to show you all something because I keep losing my pens. I got out this. <laughs> now I just have to remember to put my pens in it. I was in my sewing drawer the other day, sewing a few things, and I thought, I have three of these. I am getting one out, by golly. And I am going to use one on the table. Because I'm always losing my pins. So far, I've done really well, you know, remembering to put it in there if I keep it right in front of me. Okay, so I want to make sure that I get the edges. If I keep it in front of me, I do okay. If I don't keep it in front of me, then, um, then I forget. Okay, so let's turn this around. So we're going to give this a minute to dry. Oh, for goodness sakes. Did you all see what I almost did? I know you did. Because you were yelling at me, weren't you? Okay. There we go. Now, I'm just going to let this dry for a minute. There. Silly woman. Okay. Now I'm just going to let this dry. And then we're going to trim around it. And then we're going to glue this to this. And we're going to put our sequins in. 
I find that's the easiest way to do it without, you know, making a mess. But in the meantime, this one is already dry, so we can work on it. Okay, glue's in. <laughs> or pins in. Okay, so let's go on and get our glue on here. All right, so we're going to go on. Now, somebody remind me, don't fill up, don't glue all the holes. Okay, I want to leave the top open so I can put the sequins in. Uh, let me go on and get the sequins over here so I don't forget them. There we go. Okay, now let's get this on there. And let's get this lined up. Oh, you know what you guys did forget to remind me to do? To use the gilding wax on the inside of our Our frame. Gosh, you guys don't remind me very well. Or my rememberer doesn't work very well. Okay, see, I need to trim that off after we get our sequins in. Now, the top is open, so I'm not going to trim yet. Okay, let's squish this down here real good. All right, where are my tweezers? What did I do with my tweezers? I had them out so I wouldn't forget to use my tweezers. Otherwise, I make a mess. I think I put them right here with my brushes that I cleaned yesterday. Okay, let me grab my twe. Oh, there they are, right there, right here. I cleaned everything after our after our session yesterday. There they are. There's our card we made yesterday, so I'm going to put it in there. Okay, I think everything's down. Now, I think I want to use the gold ones and these light, some of these light pink ones. Just a few. I don't want to, I don't want to pack it. So let's get a few of these light pink ones here. Come on. I know the glue's still drying, but you can get down there. There they are. Maybe. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we're not going to put a lot in it. Because then our little birds get all covered up. And the ones I make for Christmas, I put a... 
I put a little gusset on. Yeah, I think that's all we're gonna do on these, on this little one. Okay, we have to do that one. Now let's let's trim this before we and let's go on and glue it. Okay. Now, where's our gilding wax here? All right. Let's see. Oh, it's really soft. It's really, really soft. Like creamy soft. Hmm. It smells good. I don't know if you can see the the gold that's that I'm adding down here. Yeah, like I said, I'm not I'm not adding a lot because I'm not that familiar with this, but it does look pretty. I'm not a great big gold person, but it does look pretty. All right, let's get this off of my hands here so I don't have it everywhere. Now, here it is. Okay, now I want to put a little... Well, these little dudes are just not moving around. I guess because I made it too tight. Come on, you guys. Since I didn't put a gusset, these little guys aren't going to move. So there's that one. All right, so we're going to put a gusset on this one. Okay, let's get a gusset on this one. All right, let's get a, another piece of this brown paper. Um, here, we'll just use a piece of this. Let's put that in there. Um, I don't know if this will hold. Let's use a piece of coffee dye. Hold on, I don't want to knock this on the floor. Okay. Let's use a piece of coffee dyed paper. Hmm. No, I think I want to use this. I want it to match. All right, so. Oh, where's my... Okay. All right, there's one. We'll do these like I do my Christmas ones. Okay, where is it? Let's see how long do we need. Okay. 
Well, this just doesn't tear very good, does it? Okay. All right, now I'm going to fold this in half. And this is just a little piece of um, brown cardstock. It's a little heavier than normal, and I really don't know the weight of it, but it's a little thick. You could use book page. You could use um, you could you could use anything that you have on hand. I just wanted it to match since um, since the back of it's brown. And with the way I'm going here, okay, here, let's get this folded. Now, we're going to have to trim that before we put this on. All right, let's get this trimmed. Now, this vellum paper is not my favorite. Um, I used it in my, um, hold on a second here. There. I used it in my book I made for, um, for fussy cuts. And I did not like it for small, small pieces. Uh, like if you're cutting um, things like small pockets, you know, like little pockets. Um, it does not do well, so I do not recommend it. Um, it just, it just does not take the glue well. All right, let's see if this works. I don't know if it's going to or not, but let's see if this works. All right, you little stinker. Now, let's see. Now, I'm going to do it like that. And let's see if that's going to add enough room. And is that going to show?
I think it is. Oh, no, that's the tree. Is that? Oh, that's the tree. Maybe. Is that the tree? Now. Straighten up here, boys. Okay, I need another piece for the back. So let's get a piece of book page. All right, let's get a piece of book page. Do you want? No, I don't want a piece of book page. That's where I'll use this. I know, you guys are thinking, what the heck is that girl doing? Now, this is the way I make my bigger shaker cards. All right. If I'm going to put, if I'm going to put sequins in them, this, this is what I do. All right, so that's going to be the back cover. All right, let's get to it. So I'm going to glue this here. Now, I want to make sure that that brown is not showing. And I don't think it is. Okay. All right, so I want to glue this brown down. here, glue down, and I'm gluing this down over here, okay, all, all I needed this for was a lift, all I need this for is a lift, to lift the picture up off of this, and then I'm going to Take, okay, I don't need that yet. I'm going to take these and I'm going to put the ones in here that I want. So I want a couple of these. I don't want a lot, I just want a few. I want a couple of those. I just want like one or two of those. And a couple of the pink. Okay. And then I'm going to take my picture. And since the sequins are in the middle, you need to keep them in the middle. Okay, you guys get over there in the middle. And you glue this on the lift. And you center it on the top and the bottom. Just like that. Okay? Just like that. We're, okay. Close up the sequence. 
take your back covering and you cover the back. Now for your back, you could even use a, a glue stick if you wanted. But you want to make sure the back is completely covered. your little self over there and it always helps if I put it on straight and shaky shaky now I haven't too much but now they'll shake around because it's lifted a little bit and I put it on crooked <laughs> but there we go Now, can you see them moving? Now, they are moving around. Now, once the glue dries, you can really shake it. But until then, I don't recommend it. Um, and then you can see, see where I put it on a little bit crooked. But because I chose brown, it looks more like the tree. There. And they're moving. And you can put glitter in there. You can put, and you all know I am not a glitter girl. You can put glitter in them. You can put, you can put anything you want in them. Okay, so let's try. Now, what was this? This was the, I don't remember what this was. Let's try this one. Scoot down there, you. Let's try this one and the gold. Let's try this one and the gold. They do smell good. I think this one needs stirred up a little bit. This one's got, um, yeah, this one would be good to use if you've got, see how that, uh, we still have that bright green showing? Yeah, this one's good for covering that up a little bit. All right, now let's add a little bit of gold on top of it. Okay, let me wipe this off before I stick my finger in it. Yeah, these are going to be fun to play with. These, I think these will also be fun to add to a page. Um, and I had an idea this morning. One of our, um, one of our prompts for our page is tree or uh, stem. Well, I had an idea for a stem on our page. So if you have embroidery floss, grab your embroidery floss because we're going to have some fun on a page. Oh, now this one's got some texture to it. This, this card has a little bit of texture to it. See how it's picking up the texture? I'm just lightly going over it and it's picking up the texture. Oh, got it under my finger now. Let's get that out. I'm going to have this all over my hands. Yeah, it's picking up the texture on the card. That was um, that was part of the um, water pa watercolor paper. Okay. 
there we go. Okay, this one I'll take out. And... There we go. So I do, when the glue dries, I want to um, add to this one. I want to add some ribbon. And I was thinking of this color, but, you know, this one. But now that I see it with with it, um, I don't think I do. So I'll have to um, have to get out some more ribbon and see. So I want to thank you guys for joining me here at the Ladybug Journals for another play date in our in our uh, bird journal and having some fun. So it's always fun when you come to join me here at the Ladybug Journals. So I'm glad you did. And I'm glad, I hope, I hope you all are playing around with us and having some fun. And, um, and if you are, don't forget to post and, um, and share what you're creating and what you're, what you're doing in our bird journal or any journal. I love to see what people are creating. So share what you're creating. And if you created a... Um, a shaker card of any kind, make sure that you share it and um, make sure that you are following along and um, make sure that you post anything that you do with the bird journal um, under that hashtag. Or if you're not and you just want to create and have some fun, um, make sure that you Use the hashtag uh, Ladybug Journal so I can see all the fun that you're having. So until I see you again in our next video, ta-ta for now.